Everything you need in your Hemfest survival kit coming up. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Now, if you're planning to attend a small little local ham fest, well, you can probably just uh, skip this video and move on to the next one. However, if you're going to some of the larger ham fests across the country, Hamcation, Hamvention, uh, Huntsville ham fest, you might want to pack a few things with you to make life a little bit easier for you. Now, before we start diving into the bag, let's talk about a little bit of pre-planning that you can do. If it's a large enough ham fest, they will more than likely have a website. I know that's true at least for Orlando, Xenia, and Huntsville. And on their website, you can often print out things like maps. Having these uh, available to you, whether it's a printed form like this, uh, or something that you put on your cell phone, well, it's just a good idea so that you've got a map of the, uh, the layout of the land when you get on site, and it can help you find things quick and easy by just referencing that map. Something else you might want to do is make sure you've got the address of the venue, uh, maybe the phone number of the venue. Also, if you're staying overnight, you want to have the address and the phone number of your hotel uh, readily available on your mobile device. In addition to that, you should also take a look at the website to see what vendors are going to be at the Hamfest, and go ahead and ahead of time, maybe a week before you head to the Hamfest, put a check mark beside vendors that you absolutely want to stop by and visit their booth. Then, especially at some of the larger Hamfest try to get to those booths first. However, if that booth is super busy when you go up, maybe you skip it and move to the next one on your list and come back by and visit the one that you bypassed the first go around. One more thing that I always like to do before I leave home is take a look through some of my boxes and see if I need to resupply any of my pieces and parts. This is especially true when it comes to coax adapters. It seems I am forever buying coax adapters. So I like to make a list of which ones I might need a few more of so that I've got that list handy when I get to the Hemfest and I don't have to sit there scratching my head trying to figure out, yeah, do I have enough of this one or no? That keeps me from overbuying what I already have plenty of and prevents me from overlooking something that I really needed. Now, let's talk a bit more about the survival kit. Now, obviously that's a bit tongue in cheek, but it's just a few things that I have found super helpful to have on me or with me when attending some of the larger ham fest. The first thing is a good quality backpack. You don't want to overpack this thing. You want to leave plenty of room in it. That way, if you're buying some of the smaller components like those coax adapters, you've got a place that you can just drop them down into and not have to hold them in your hand and don't have to make a trip all the way back out to the car. So it will help me hold quite a few purchases as long as they're smaller items right here in the backpack without having to make that trip back to the car. Now, on the backpack, on the outside, one of the things that I highly recommend is water. You gotta stay hydrated if you're going to find that best deal. In addition to that, on the outside of the bag, I also keep an HT. Now this is kind of, uh, you could go either way on this. The primary reason I keep an HT out there is so that if I want to keep up with uh, friends or family while I'm at a ham fest, just pick some obscure frequency. I wouldn't try to use the national calling frequency at a ham fest, especially one like uh, Dayton or Orlando, because there's going to be a lot of traffic on there. So pick an obscure frequency that only you and your party is using. You can usually find a clear frequency uh, if you just search around a little bit. But I find a uh, HT is a super handy item to have. Now, if you're traveling alone, maybe you can leave this one behind. All right, digging into the backpack, I always carry 
at least my small HT Go Kit. Uh, I've got this one and I've got a larger one, but it, at a bare minimum, I'm going to carry this so that I've got an extra battery for that HT uh, in, in case I needed it. If I've burned through one battery, I want to have a spare with me that'll get me through the day. Something else that you definitely, definitely, definitely want to have, especially at a larger ham fest, don't ask me how I know, let's not talk about last year at Dayton, you can get caught with a sudden rain shower. And if you're half a mile literally from your car, you're going to be soaking wet by the time you get there. A decent rain jacket is essential gear, in my opinion. This one is made by Frog Tox. I'll leave a link to this down in the description below. It's super lightweight. I think it weighs like 8 ounces, and it's just a good quality jacket. Now, if you didn't want to go with something like this, you could also go with one of the disposable ponchos. Uh, you can get those for about a dollar and a half a piece on Amazon, and those are nice not only to throw in your backpack going to a ham fest, but I actually put those in all of my radio bags. That way, if I happen to be out and about at a Parks on the Air activation, and I get caught in a rain shower and I'm a little ways away from the car, I can cover me or the gear, or with a little luck, I can cover both and get us back to the car dry. Now, two more items in the main kit. You notice this thing's pretty empty so that I can pack those purchases down into here as well. If I happen to be in the boneyard and I want to test a piece of equipment, I always keep an inexpensive meter tucked down in this bag. This guy is super small and compact, so it doesn't take up a lot of room, but gives me the ability just to do some quick checks if I need to. The other thing I like to carry with me is a small lithium iron phosphate battery. This is a BioNO 3 amp hour uh, that will give me the power pole option right on the front. But I do like to carry that with me. That way, if I wanted to try to power a radio up and verify that at least everything was going to power on, I can do that if that vendor doesn't have power there. Last, but certainly not least, cash. Not everyone at the Hamfest is going to take a credit or debit card, especially if you get out to the flea market area. So having some cold hard cash on hand is always a good idea. Speaking of credit card and debit cards, if you are traveling a ways from home and you're thinking about making a large purchase once you get there, you might want to give your bank a heads up. That way they don't flag that purchase as a fraudulent charge and block you from being able to buy it. Just uh, kind of words of wisdom from, uh, well, been there and done that as well. Now, before we head off, there's a couple of things that you definitely don't want to overlook. You don't need a full-blown trauma kit in a bag like this. However, ibuprofen can definitely save the day. If you've been walking all day at a ham fest and those knees and feet are a bit sore, this can go a long way. Something else I would definitely recommend is some of the pink medicine, just in case that food truck hot dog is not as good as you thought it was. All right, guys, I hope you found some of these tips helpful. Do you have a tip that I overlooked? Leave it down in the comments below. I'd love to know what you have in your backpack when you travel to a ham fest. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.